Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about exponential functions, which is any function that can be written in the form f of x equals b to the x, where b is a constant, uh, either greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. There's two basic shapes. If b is greater than 1, you get one type of exponential function. If b is between 0 and 1, you get the other. <clears throat> we do not allow b equal 1 and we do not allow b negative. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So for example, 2 to the x is an exponential function with base 2. And notice what it's saying here. If you want to find f of anything, it's 2 to that power. The 2 stays fixed and you place the x in the exponent. The best way to get a feeling for this is to really just plot some points. Uh, for example, when x is negative 1, what is y? Put negative 1 into here. f of negative 1 is 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half, see? Anyway, so you plot some points, and the graph looks kind of like this. This would be the exponential function uh, with, um, with base 2. What do you notice about it? First of all, the domain is negative infinity to, to infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. Uh, however, we, we do not get 0. And, and the reason is because this, this is called a horizontal asymptote here on the negative x-axis. Uh, it never touches the x-axis, but it gets arbitrarily close. For example, if x is negative 10, you plug in... Uh, if you want to find f of negative 10, you plug in 2 to the negative 10 power, you get 1 over 2 to the 10, which is about 1 1,000th. So you see it's getting close to the x-axis, but never reach it, reaches it. What else do you notice about this function? Well, it goes through 0, 1, and it's increasing. And it's 1 to 1. So it has an inverse function, right? It turns out, as long as the base is between, as, as long as the base is greater than 1, they all have the same basic, basic shape. Notice 5 to the x is a little bit steeper than 2 to the x, as long as x is greater than 1. And 1.5 1 to the x isn't quite as steep as 2 to the x, but they all have the same basic shape, more or less. They all have domain, negative infinity to infinity, range, 0 to infinity, they're 1 to 1, and uh, they're increasing. Okay, so that's, that's one type of exponential function. The other type of exponential function is when the base is between 0 and 1. Like, let's look at 1 half to the x. Again, the best way to get a feeling for this is just to make a table, plot some points, and, and draw the graph. The graph looks kind of like this. Notice, for example, when x is negative 1, what's 1 half to the negative 1 power? Doesn't that mean take the reciprocal? 1 half to the negative 1 would be 2, wouldn't it? Anyway, so if you plot these points, you get a graph that looks like this. It's decreasing. It's 1 to 1. It goes to the point 0, 1. And it, it turns out it has a horizontal asymptote along the positive x-axis. Um, this is true for all, for all times when the base is between 0 and 1. You see, if you look at point 0.2 to the x, uh, it's a little bit, it's, it, it's, it's decreasing more steeply when x is less than 0. Point 0.8 to the x, it's not quite as steep. Uh, but they're all going to be decreasing exponential functions. They have uh, domain, negative infinity to infinity, range, 0 to infinity. They're 1 to 1. It turns out that the closer the base gets to 1, the flatter it is. Anyway, so those are, those are the two basic shapes. So why can't the base equal 1? Well, if the base equals 1, then you have 1 to the x, uh, which is uh, turns out it's a horizontal line. The y value is always 1. And it's not 1 to 1, so we, we don't allow it. We're going to be looking at the inverse functions pretty soon. So we want, we want them to be 1, one to 1. Now, when you have a base that's negative, we don't allow that either. We talked about that. Here's, here's why. Um, if you look at, make a table here for these values, remember, if you have parentheses negative 2 to the x, the base is negative 2. You, whatever you want to find f of, you, you put in the exponent here. So f of 0 is negative 2 to the 0 power, which is 1, okay. Uh, f of 1 is negative 2 to the 1, which is negative 2, and so on. What you notice is the y values alternate from positive to negative. But it's actually worse than that, because look at what happens when you plug in 1 half. Negative 2 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of negative 2, right? which of course is undefined. In fact, whenever you have an exponent with an even denominator, it turns out it's going to be undefined. So the graph looks really weird. The graph looks kind of like this. We're not going to allow a base. Um, we're not going to allow the, the base uh, negative either. <clears throat> the base must be greater than 0 and not equal to 1. Okay, well, don't, now don't get that confused with this function right here. 
uh, parentheses negative 2 to the x has base negative 2, but if you just have negative 2 to the x without parentheses, this is just a reflection of 2 to the x across the x-axis, right? So negative of 2 to the x would look kind of like this, which is fine. Okay, speaking of translations, let's look at some of these, these graphs. Um, suppose you want to sketch the graph of f of x and f of negative x on the same coordinate system. Uh, it turns out that's a reflection across the um, across the y-axis, right? So this is 2 to the x. f of negative x would be 2 to the negative x, which is a reflection across the y-axis. This graph looks familiar. This looks like something we just talked about. And here's why it, why it does look like a familiar graph. f of negative x is 2 to the negative x, right? Which is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the x, because you get rid of the negative exponent, which, if you think about it, is the same thing as 1 half to the x. So every, every time uh, you reflect a... a a, a function where the base is bigger than 1 across the y-axis, you, you get a graph of a function whose base is between 0 and 1. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Um, what, what if you wanted to sketch the graph of f of x plus 3, where f of x is 2 to the x? Well, f of x plus 3, isn't that just a, a horizontal shift through to the left? So if f of x is 2 to the x, the graph of f of x plus 3 would be units 3 units to the left. For example, the point 0, 1 becomes the point negative 3, 1. Here's the most important one. What would the graph of uh, f of x plus 3 look like if f of x is 2 to the x? This is a vertical shift up 3 units, right? So this is the interesting part. When you take the graph of um, 2 to the x and you shift it up 3 units, notice what happens to the point 0, 1. It becomes the point 0, 4. But what happens to the horizontal asymptote? Remember? The negative x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Do you see that it, it gets shifted up also? So whenever you shift it up three units, the horizontal asymptote gets shifted up. So the horizontal asymptote in this case is y equals three. Okay, we're going to use that last fact to help us graph some of these uh, exponential functions. Uh, all, the, all these examples can be written in the form a times b to the x plus c. And if you follow this process, they're not really that bad. First, find c. c will always be your horizontal shift. I should say your vert vertical shift, which is your horizontal asymptote. Then you use the y-intercept that you can read from the graph to find a, and then you use another point that you can read from the graph to find b. This is how it works. Suppose, for example, you wanted to find the equation of this, of this uh, graph. It looks like the horizontal um, asymptote is still zero. So do you, do you see why c equals zero in this case? Next, we find a. To find a, you use the, the y-intercept when x is 0, y is 2. So you actually plug that into your function. Plug in 2 for y and 0 for x. b to the 0 is 1, right? So then you get that a equals 2. The only thing to do now is to find the b, the base, and use the other point 1, 6. Uh, you plug in 1 for x and 6 for y, so you get that 6 equals 2 times b to the 1. So divide by 2, b equals 3. That's your equation. That's your equation, f of x equals 2 times 3 to the x. Let's do one more, and then I'll, I'll give you some to try. This one, you, you notice there is a y-intercept of negative 2. So that will always be your c. Do that first. Now we use the y-intercept to find a. When x is 0, y is negative 1. You plug in 0 for x, negative 1 for y. Remember, b to the 0 is 1. So you get that negative 1 equals a minus 2, a equals 1. And then um, to find b, you use another point, like the point 1, 1. Put, the point, uh, put in uh, 1 for x and 1 for y. You get that 1 equals b minus 2, b equals 3. So you found the equation of the exponential function. Anyway, so what I want to do now is try these on your own. Hit the pause button and see if you can find the equation of these two um, graphs. Okay, we don't have time to go over these, so I'm just going to lay it out there and, sh and you can take a picture of it or whatever. On the, on the first one, the answer to the first one was f of x equals negative 2 times 3 to the x plus 1. And on the second one, your, uh, your function is um, f of x equals negative 1 times 1 half to the x power. Okay, so uh, you can check that on your own. We'll go over these later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.